you remember last time, last week, we looked at similar shapes. We looked at areas for similar shapes. We're going to look at similar solids now, not 2D flat things, but 3D things. They've got, they've got some depth to them. Okay? Now, I actually want to take these particular shapes that you've just worked out surface area and volume for, and what I want you to imagine is an alternate version of, of both of these. Okay? In order for it to be similar, everything about that cube has to stay cube, cubish. Cubist? No, cubish, okay? Um, but we're going to change the size, okay? So it's 5 by 5 by 5 at the moment. Let's make a... Where did my green go? There it is. Here it is. Let's make an alternate version of this cube that's not 5 by 5 by 5, but let's, let's double all the measurements, okay? So let's make it 10 by 10 by 10. Can we do that? 10, 10, and 10, okay? Now, for this new alternate version of the shape, <clears throat> I'd like you to... Work out the same two things, volume and surface area. Volume and surface area. If you're really quick at doing it for our bigger cube, I'd like you to have a go at this bigger cone as well. I'll do you a bit of a hand here. Uh, Leo hopefully worked out what the perpendicular height was. It's 12 centimeters, bless you. So I want you to also work out volume and surface area for our alternate version of the cone, which is twice the size. So it's not going to be 5, 12, 13, it's going to be 10, 24, and okay, great. So can you work out the volume and surface area for these similar solids? They've just been doubled in their dimensions. Can you go ahead and do that for me? Let's think about the measurements first. For the cube, which is the easy bit, I think you should have got a volume of exactly a thousand. Cubic centimeters? Yes. And for the surface area, if I'm looking at things right, I think you've got 600 square centimeters. Yeah? 600? Yeah. Okay. Now, when you have a look at this, I want you to think back to our work on areas of similar shapes from last week. Do you remember? If you take just a, a flat shape, right? Like, say, a square, right? And if you increase its dimensions, what happens to the area? Like if we doubled the, si the length of a square, what happens to the area? The area is not twice the size. What is it? Yeah, it's quadrupled, right? Because if you think about your square, just picture, picture this square with me, right? You double it one way for the width, and then you double it again for the height, because you're doubling it in two dimensions. So therefore, doubling twice is like quadrupling. You agree? What if I, um, what if I made it three times bigger? Three times bigger. It's going to be the area will be nine times bigger. In fact, you can draw it like this. This is worth drawing just on the side if you've got a bit of space. If you have one square like that and you make it three times wider, like that, and then you make it three times taller, like this, these are the new side lengths, right? So if you draw out the whole thing, can you literally see you can fit nine of the original square in your new square? Do you see it? See, that's why it's nine times bigger, because three that way, three this way. Okay, so now have a look at your numbers here. And what relationships do you see? Think about the surface area. Compare this surface area with this one. How much bigger is it? It's exactly four times bigger. Why is that? It's because it's the original surface area there it is, and this is worth writing down next to your 600. Multiply by, I'm not going to write 4. I'm going to write 2 squared. Do you see why it's 2 squared? Because you double it one way and then you double it another. Surface area is just like area. Okay, what about the volume? It's 1,000 now. How much bigger is it? Wait, would it make a difference if you put 4? Like... Uh, you can put 4 if you like. Obviously, 2 squared and 4 have the same value. But I'm trying to highlight that you're doing it, and you'll see why when I do this. Yeah. You're doing doubling and you're doing it twice, okay, which is a slightly different process. Okay, this time it's 8, right? It, you started with 125, uh, 125 cubic centimetres, but again, instead of writing 8, you're doubling, but how many times are you doubling? You're doubling three times because it's a three-dimensional quantity. Does that make sense? So you double, and then you double, and then you double again. And two cubed is eight. Does that make sense? If I had tripled things instead, we already know that the area would be nine times bigger. What about the volume? 
How much bigger would the volume become if I tripled all the dimensions? I should have I said it in a shorter way. If I took our cube here, right? And instead of doubling the dimensions, I tripled them. Okay, so I tripled them all the 15, 15, 15. The new volume is going to be 3 times 3 times 3, 27 times bigger than the volume that you started with, which is very large, right? Okay, come over to the code. Now, just want to point out something I've put on the board, which maybe you didn't notice I sort of ninja on there while you were working on things. I've actually taken the approximate answers. Uh, pretty much everyone answered to me in approximate terms. And I've just added on the exact answers here, okay? Um, I've left it in terms of pi, because you know pi. It's got all those irritating decimal places and that kind of thing. So I've just left it there, because now I can say, hey, that's exact. Like, it's not approximately 90 pi. It's exactly 90 pi, as opposed to this, which is an approximation, okay? If I do that, and you go to your new working for your big cone, I think what you should find is, where's my surface area? Here it is. I'm pretty sure you get... 360 pi square centimeters. I'm pretty sure. You can multiply 360 by pi in order to check if that's the number that you've got. It's going to be a thousand and something, right? Like lower thousands? What is it? Someone got it? Yeah, it's the exact same number. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the same number, right? And in the same way, when I go to volume, I'm expecting it to be 800? Yeah. 800 pi cubic centimeters. You can again check 800 times pi, that's 2400-ish, a bit over, right? Um, where did I get those numbers from? How did I just think them up without a calculator in my hands? What did I do? Look back at your original numbers. Do you see what I did? Yeah, I okay. did. you do it like divided by roughly around? Did you like divided by roughly around? Here's the brilliant thing about it. I could have done it by rounding, but I didn't need to because I've seen a pattern here, right? And I can go ahead and I can crunch through the formulas. But this is 90. And because it's an area, I double it twice, okay? This is a volume. Remember I started with this, this guy over here? 100 pi cubic centimeters. Well, it's a volume, so when I double, how many times do I double? Um, one, two, three times for three dimensions. Okay. So this 90 pi is what your original, that 282 number that you gave me, that's where it came from before you pressed equals on your calculator and approximated it. Okay. So this is why we looked at areas of similar figures last week. It was sort of to gear you up for this. If you know the volume of a shape, you can work out the volumes or surface area for any shape that's the same kind of thing, but bigger or smaller, okay, which is what we call similar, all right?